What up, it's your boy T Ray with the reaction. So, since I had a little bit of time, I thought I um, get this out the way and get my um, kill counts and reaction moving. So, about to do a kill count reaction to Bride or Reanimator. So yesterday, or I think Friday, yesterday Friday, I did a reaction to Reanimator. Oh my God! I released this this Saturday. I think. Oh, sorry, it's Sunday. I'm trying to remember when I do this. Anyway, um. That movie was crazy. Oh my god. That yeah, it was it was Saturday night. Yeah, that one was crazy. Oh my goodness. Oh god. So I'm gonna react react to this one and I'm probably gonna premiere it till tomorrow morning. I probably go or tomorrow during the day I might um make it as a premiere as well too. So when y'all suggested that I should be a good one to react to, um, I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna give my man credit too, because some people say I don't like to give people credit. I I died I would love to just sometimes forget their names. But um, Derek Hogan. So he said, "Watch it through the end." I definitely will do. Even I'll break losing. Look at what he said. This is more gorier than um the reanimator. So I got the explicit version of that too. So yeah, I had to look through the videos. So they had explicit versions of these um of the other videos they do for this one. But the third one, I think there's an explicit version. I don't think so. I think it's probably when he had to uh tone it down anyway. So anyway, this is. Um, Bride of Reanimator 1990, the sequel to Reanimator, and it's probably left off when it, what happened at the end of the last Reanimator with the um, with the girl died in after being choked out by the zombie. We need the reanimated person. So while further ado, let's check out the Bride of Reanimator. Let's get it. And this is, like I said, trying to look away. So the last one was stuck. I was gonna lose that one. So I might lose this one. Who, who knows? But let's get it. Don't count that. Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Bride of Reanimator, released in 1990. This sequel to Reanimator... The same guys, the same two Ryan guys. Usna, ...replaced Stuart Gordon in the director's chair, while also co-writing the screenplay with Woody Keith and Rick Fry, who had written his movie Society. Woody Keith would also go on to write Usna's Silent Night, Deadly Night 4. Although uh. Barbara Crampton's agent convinced her not to take a cameo role in this movie, most of the other principal actors mm -hmm. from the first film this hair out longer. including David Gale as Dr. Paul really? Hill, Bruce Abbott as the impressionable Dan Kane, and of course, Jeffrey Cole. I'm surprised Dr. Hill made a sequel. Despite the returning cast members and the direct continuation of the first film's story, Bride differs from its predecessor in a number of ways. Tone-wise, it's even more of a comedy. Sure, mm -hmm. Reanimator was absolutely hilarious, but that was mostly because of the campy performances, not the words in its script. In contrast, Bride is written to be intentionally funny, with a lot of ironic lines oh, and shit. absurd situations. Really? The sequel also has a more gothic aesthetic, which is appropriate since, in addition to its Lovecraftian source material, it's also paying major homage to classic Universal monster movies. The script for Bride is much less straightforward than the originals, feeling more like a cobbled together jumble of scenes rather than a logical story with rational characters. But again, that almost feels appropriate, given Herbert West new goal this time around. Here, he's trying to assemble new life from reanimated pieces. It's perhaps due to this macabre change in his ambitions that the sequel sometimes Ew, is oh the God. It's a good thing that this is a sponsored episode then, so I can show you all the good stuff for free. You ever buy something online and find out later you could have gotten it for way less? I mean, it happens to me all the time. You see how much crap I've got to buy for the backgrounds of these videos. Luckily, from now on, I can use Honey to save myself some money. It's a free browser extension that can so find yeah, another one every now. Last one movement, this one while home. you shop online. You don't have to change anything about your shopping habits, and it only takes two quick clicks to install. I just used it to find the best deals on some Blu-rays for upcoming <laughs> Kill Count movies, which is really useful, because my Blu-ray budget's getting kind of crazy. Ooh. So be like me and shop with confidence by getting Honey for free me. at joinhoney.com slash deadmeat. That's joinhoney.com slash deadmeat. There's no reason not to do it. How many kills will the Bride of Reanimator feature till death does it part? Let's find out and get to them. 
The movie begins with a familiar severed head speaking into a wow. void about how he's gonna get revenge on Herbert West, which he finds to be quite humorous. <laughs> so the must have been his final movie before he passed away because he passed when David 991. Gale heard that a sequel was being made, he called Brian Usna and asked to be involved. Although it didn't make a lot of sense, considering what became of Dr. Carl Hill at the end of the last movie, Usna agreed, under the condition that Gale would remain a severed head throughout the second film. Which later led to David coming out of wardrobe when we were getting ready to shoot. When he came out, he said, I went to wardrobe, but they said they didn't have anything for me. I said, I don't know, you want a hat? <laughs> we move on to Peru, South America, less than a year after the events of the first film, which are now being called The Massacre at Miskatonic. Med School. Catch a name. Herbert West and Dan Kane are at it again, using victims of the Peruvian Civil uh... War as subjects for their very bloody experiments. And for anyone wondering how we got here after we saw Herbert potentially killed in the first movie's climax, you should know that they did originally film a scene that took place right after the end of the original, with Mary Sheldon replacing Barbara Crampton as Meg, and in it, they revealed that West had survived the intestinal tentacle attack. No. Hill didn't kill me. But to quote Brian Yuzna, when it comes wow. to explaining crap like that, Well, as it turns out, who cares? In any case, <laughs> their latest patient on the operating table doesn't make it. And even uh. though Kane gets all emotional over it, West thinks the dude could be useful. Typical West. West takes his ever-glowing reagent and injects the body with it. But dude, why are you gonna waste some serum if you're just gonna shoot the reanimated guy in the head? Right away? Reagent doesn't grow on trees, Herbert. You know this. He tries to rally Kane using the persuasive power of his iguana friend, but it's difficult to get any science done when you're in the middle of a war zone, especially when you got soldiers busting into your tento wow. science. Three Peruvian soldiers end up getting killed here, mm -hmm. one by Kane from a machete strike to the back of his Ooh. neck, and another pair by West after he shoots them down with a gun. Deciding that the warfare and tent fires just aren't worth it anymore, West drags Kane away, promising to take him home. The opening credits are basically the same as the originals, with a few additional bodies body parts shown in neon diagrams, reflecting the expanded focus of West's experiments in this movie. The theme by Richard Band gets a bit of an expansion as well, while still retaining the core psycho riff, and the long list of visual effects credits by many renowned artists previews just how awesome and intense this movie's gore is about to be. Oh, After shit. the credits, we return to Miskatonic Hospital, where the boys are somehow, once again, gainfully employed. Really gotta work on your background check system, wow. Miskatonic. Dr. Dan Kane is treating a terminal patient named Gloria, who's okay. played by Kathleen Kinmont so of Cops Do It By The Book fame, and who also, I've gotta say, was a fucking treasure of a person to talk to at Texas Frightman. Oh, okay. Chelsea and nice. I just want to hang out with her. She was so fun. As Gloria, though, she's got to be more careful about what she says around certain creepy okay, doctors. Okay, so this, uh, yeah, this so I was wrong. It's not that do it as a girlfriend. Say? A healthy head. Mind if I take a look? Another doctor at Miskatonic, who's slightly less creepy than Wes, is pathologist Wilbur Graves. He gets a visit from Lieutenant Leslie Chapman of the Arkham Police Department, because look what he's come across. A head. And if you couldn't tell, it's supposed to be Dr. Hill's head. I guess it kind of looks like him. John Carl Beekler returns- Hold up, so y'all realize they said Arkham, right? This place, does this take place in the Batman universe? Yeah, I got, I'm trying to prick that out. I just realized that too to work on this movie's yes. fake head effects under his company, Magical Media Industries. And while this first fake head is a really simple prop, later on they upgrade to a radio-controlled unit before Beekler gets even crazier with it in the film's finale. Dr. Graves takes Lieutenant Chapman into his closet of cadavers and tells him that none of the bodies from the massacre eight months ago have shown any sign of decay. Huh, a thing like that. One of Brian's oh, weak points is his so new characters, who never achieved the infamy that the the common parts in the original did. All due respect to actors Mel Stewart and Claude Earl Jones, but whenever West or Hill aren't on screen, I'm sitting there wishing they were. Especially because Dr. Graves is one weird fucking dude with a weird sense of humor. Suicide. Would-be ballet dancer, didn't have the stuff. 
cut off her feet and bled to death. <laughs> what the fuck? Really? Who are you, man? Graves admits that this victim's feet have gone missing from the facilities, and in fact, that many other body parts have also gone missing lately. But it's not like they could have been stolen or anything. Who would want to steal body parts? Somebody rang? Yeah, Herbert West is obviously the grimy little pimp pilfering body parts from the morgue, and on this particular visit, he finds quite the special specimen on a shelf. The heart of Megan Halsey, Dan Kane's Cramptonistic fiance, oh. who died at the end of the first movie. Why, that could certainly oh, come in handy. Okay, Before I was he wrong. leaves his one-stop body part shop, West comes across Dr. Hill's head, which he promptly begins monologuing to. You helped me prove that consciousness resides in I every thought he, yeah. part of the body. Uh, gotta say, that's not real science there, man. My toes ain't having dreams or nothing, dude. After smarmily taunting the lifeless head in a pretty fun POV shot, West returns home to a gothic little townhouse he shares with Dan Kane, a squalid stone structure that sits atop a cemetery. It's a great location if you want to knock down a wall or two and make some expansions, like wow. that crypt room you've always talked about having. Wow. In addition to his property brothersing, Herbert's been busy with experiments, and he eagerly shows Dan his latest invention, a drug that can kill instantly by simulating a heart attack, leaving no tissue damage or perhaps you more you evidence away, damn, bro. It's perfect for acquiring fresh you, specimens you to monster. Like their poor iguana friend here, who's just become an unwilling organ donor to their cause. With some science and reagent, West whips up something he compares to primordial ooze, then uses a few dabs of that new juice to give life to a creepy little eyeball ham thing. Shit, it almost looks like a protoss dragoon. The finger creature is a memorable part of this movie and was designed by Anthony Dublin, who also worked on effects in the original. Dublin made a cast of his own right hand to create the various puppets used for this monstrosity. Wow. It was also depicted in stop motion, animated by David Allen, and in one shot by Anthony Dublin simply doing some hand acting while wearing an eyeball ring. Wow. It's one of my favorite random parts of That's this random nice. ass movie. Dan, however, is not a fan. I'm moving out. Yeah, he's super pissed about all of Herbert's mad science, <laughs> even right. though you know he's gonna roll over for it a whole bunch of times throughout this movie. His first acquiescence happens right the fuck away, in fact, when West reveals what he picked up at the morgue. Meg's heart. Well now, you didn't mention that you stole my dead fiance's organs, Herbert. With that in mind, of course I'll help you! Yes. Yes, let's make ourselves a Frankenwoman using Meg's heart as an engine. It's the perfect plan! Just as long as no cops randomly show up to- Oh my god! Wes, you're not gonna believe this, man. Who are you? Dr. Wes. No, you're not. That's my name, liar. Chapman grills the two roomies about their curious choice of real estate mm -hmm. and their involvement in the Miskatonic Massacre, all while West's creepy little ocular fingerling runs around using all those special effects techniques I just talked about. When Chapman starts probing them about the morgue's missing body parts, they both get a serious case of shit my pants face. But the detective decides to leave them for now, unknowingly crushing their practical uh, uh, eye on his way out. Back at Miskatonic, nasty. Dr. Graves gets the right idea to stick some of West's wakey wakey juice left over from the crime scene straight into the body of a dead bat. The bat comes back to life and flies around the room before latching onto Graves' face. So the doctor puts an end to that crazy bat shit with a scalpel. Jesus, dude, you look like a kid who's gonna grow up to be a psychopath. When he sees just how powerful the glow-in-the-dark serum is, he gets the even brighter idea to inject it into Dr. Hill's head. <laughs> yep, we're back Why? at it again with the reality of Hill, hissing at people about how deficient their scientific theories are. Totally idiotic. But in spite of his perceived superiority to Graves, Hill is not above asking the full-bodied doctor for help. After all, kinda hard to do stuff for yourself when you're stuck acting underneath a table again, right David Gale? Uh, West and Kane steal a dead body from the hospital by weekend at Bernie's it out in a wheelchair. But on their way <laughs> out, Dan runs into Francesca, a woman who they had worked with down in Peru back in that opening scene. She's randomly in town because she's doing interviews in Boston or something? Whatever gives Dan Kane another love interest, I'm I mad guess, they which did obviously the Herbert West isn't a fan of. Don't 
Let the little head rule the big head, Dan. <laughs> oh, but you know he's gonna, Herbie. Try not to get too Stop. dirty. Dan and Francesca <laughs> make dinner plans, with her promising to cook a meal using a lot of garlic. But after Kane leaves, Lieutenant Chapman ambushes Francesca to try to get some deets about Dan the man. To coax her into cooperating, he tells her about the Miskatonic Massacre, which has since been blamed on a handful of psych patients that are kept in a room with some half-assed wallpapering. Thing is, these patients were all previously reported as dead, including this lovely lady, who just so happened to be Chapman's wife. Oh no! Scary zombie clothes! Uh, now, do you see why Dan and Herbert are bad men, lady? In the basement of their graveyard home, West and Kane come close to completing their custom rig of a human being. They've even got a water cooling system installed. Uh, nice! But the doorbell buzz means it's dinner time. So Dan changes into his dinner shirt and lets in his dinner date. She makes him a dinner sauce and gives him a dinner kiss, which quickly turns into a dinner dessert. Looks like Dan's a winner winner. He got the chick and dinner. Downstairs, far from any dinner delights, West whiles away the time, reanimating disparate body parts, even getting Tarantino with them. Before long, he's cat dog and arms and feet together, an experiment that ends after the two-sided limb attacks him, and he decides to throw it away. He goes upstairs to find Lieutenant Chapman waiting for him inside his own house. Chapman manhandles West a couple of times and gains entrance to his basement laboratory. And after one look at the Franken lady lying under some tools, Chapman attacks West, angry over all this mad sciencing, and oh yeah, also for reanimating his dead wife. Ooh. West turns it back around on him and insinuates that Chapman killed his wife in the first place by means of domestic abuse. But before that uncomfortable character development, oh shit, it all, West ends the fight and kills Chapman with that heart attack rag, which oh. proves to be immediately. Just as advertised. Kane comes downstairs and yells at West for whoopsie daisy murdering someone again. But Herbert quickly convinces him that they can fix this problem with a little bit of that glowing green. After an injection, Chapman comes back to life all scared and spitting up bubble yum. He tosses a styrofoam cooler of organs at Dan Ooh. and is just about to kill him when West goes on ah! Jason Voorhees with a machete and severs that zombie's arm. Splurdy splurdy! Chapman runs away from them and is taking a breather on the couch when Francesca comes downstairs in a do-it-by-the-bookish outfit. She's wondering why the police lieutenant is there, and I guess it's to kill your dog. Oh, why you kill the dog? Running out yeah, the front door, right before Dan Dan the Ab Man can do anything to help. West proves equally unhelpful when it comes to Francesca's grief, but uh, hey, free dog parts. That'll work. For what, exactly? Francesca learns later that night when she comes downstairs to find that Herbert's taught her reanimated pup a new trick. Shake! Good boy! Such a firm grasp you have! Francesca calls Dan a freak for fucking around with Damn. mad science before running out on him and his creepy little butcher nerd friend. The two of them return to work at the hospital the next day, where the terminal patient Gloria finally flatlines Aww. right in front of Dan's face. The paddles don't work to bring her back, and neither does West's peculiar strategy of cutting open her torso and sticking his hands wrist deep into her chest cavity. Huh, thought for sure that would've worked. Back to the wheezing Dr. Hillhead, who's so obnoxious and noisy, it's driving Dr. Graves to drink. When Graves refuses to help the Hillhead out, the severed nuisance resorts to his old parlor trick of telepathy to take control of all the other reanimations oh, out of the world, shit. including the Miskatonic Massacre Patsies and the wandering Lieutenant Chapman. His telepathy doesn't work on Graves, though, and the annoyed doctor tosses Hill's head in the trash. A lot of body part waste in this movie, but I guess there is also a lot of body part recycling. Uh, so that's nice. Take, for example, Gloria's head. West has recycled it onto his bride. And sure, Dan Dan the pirate looking man is gonna wilt her and object at first, but you know he's gonna go along with it. I was right! West convinces his weak willed partner. I was right, it is Gloria's. Showcase, during which he gets kind of creepy about the specifics. These legs walk the streets. You remember the hooker who was killed in ER by her pimp last week? Think of all the bodies these legs have wrapped around. And here, the womb of the virgin. There's a lot to read into here about what men think constitutes the perfectly custom-made woman. But I don't have time to get into all that, so we'll no. just jump to the part where West brings it all home by praising Gloria's head. She... So it was right, it is Gloria's head. 
This is, uh, this is Gloria. Yeah, that did it. Dan Dan the paper man is ready to glove up and get down to work. That night at the hospital, before he can close up shop and leave, Dr. Graves discovers that his refuse has been emptied thanks to Dr. Hill's new zombie pal. It's Lieutenant Chapman, who's playing the same role that Dean Halsey did in the first movie. And new Dean physically forces Dr. Graves to perform an operation on Hill's face. Hey, just remember, Carl, a little goes a long way. When Graves is finished with his work, they lock him in a freezer or something, never to be seen again, and then they kill two nurses off screen. Why you gotta kill the nurses? And head out towards this movie's crazy. Hey, why any black nurses are that dead? That's fucked up. Rages on outside. West and Kane finish up their build a babe. Dan is briefly distracted by some movement and noise behind their basement's brick wall, but he offers up an excuse for West to latch onto by referencing one of H.P. Lovecraft's other works. Sounds like rats in the wall. West goes to give his patented injection, only to get stopped by his partner slash understudy. Let me. Well, well, well. Looks like Christmas came early for Herbert West. This is probably the single greatest moment of his life. The reanimation process takes longer than expected, and while they're waiting, there's a buzz at the front door. West goes to answer it and finds that a box has been left on their porch. And what's in the box? It's a head! Dr. Hill's head, now affixed with bat wings. While West deals with his old arch nemesis, Gloria Stein, not Gloria Steinem, big difference, Fine. awakens in the basement, and Dan immediately gets to work making out with her. Oh, he's, he's doing CPR. He was probably kinda kissing her too, though. Mm. She rises from the slab, looking like she's in the middle of a real bad trip, so Dan tries to soothe her spirits by telling her she's alive and praying to her body. It works enough to evoke some speech. Alive. The Bride of Reanimator was designed by K&B Effects, the ubiquitous special effects team company founded by Robert Kurtzman, Greg Nicotero, and Howard Berger. They also did the makeup for the reanimated people in the psych ward, but since The Bride was this movie's centerpiece attraction, they went all out for it, creating a full body cast of Kathleen Kinmont. Using that, they designed various separate body pieces to attach to her, in an application process that took nine freaking hours the first time they did it. Quite the exhausting oh endeavor. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Gloria was not his... I thought Gloria... Mm, geez. I'm sorry, dude. I'm just trying to go back real quick. Hold on. The terminal is... Yeah, that's the terminal is, Gloria. I'm wrong, so I was wrong. Eventually, they got it down to six, but it's I still took two her. hours to take it all off at the end of the day. The Talk wife. about devotion. The, the, the Francesca wife. shows up at the cemetery house, oh, so no. she can be back in this movie again. And after some zombies chase her around the lawn, she gets inside and forces the reanimated folk to look for alternative means of entrance. Inside the house, she finds Dan presenting Gloria Stein to Herbert, who stops hunting for the hillhead bat to marvel at his creation. I made you. But ain't no time to celebrate, y'all. Cause there be zombies in the house. Oh shit, like that one's a zombie cop. Look like thriller. Look like thriller in there. The zombies chase Dan oh, and shit. Stein, Francesca, and West into the basement, where they bar the door behind them, locking the danger out for now. But now that they have a moment of respite, Danny Two Girls over there is about to have a problem. He tells Francesca that the cobbled together bride before her is Meg. But she responds that Meg's dead, baby, and that sends Dan into a patented ball of trauma. Hate to blame the victim, Dan, but buddy, you're doing this all to yourself here, dude. Francesca tries to reprimand West for creating a blasphemous, jealous abomination, but West bites back with an absolute show stealer of a monologue. Blasphemy? Before what god? A god repulsed by the miserable humanity he created in his own image? I will not be shackled by the failures of your God. He goes at it for a hot wow. minute, and it kicks a lot of ass, because Jeffrey Combs is just the freaking best, dude. Gloria Stein ends up lashing out in a jealous rage, knocking over the cauldron of reagents no! that smoke machine in the process. Damn, if only that crew member had been faster in stopping that cauldron from falling. Gloria Stein tries to kill Francesca, but Dan stops her and calls her a monster. And that's not a nice thing to say, now is it? <laughs> made me. Aw, poor Gloria Stein is getting rejected by her creator, and no amount of sexy leg is gonna bring him back. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe the sexy leg is gonna work. It's not like Dan Dan's a strong-willed man. Don't want your 
Well, holy shit, look at that. Hey, Dan, when'd you reanimate yourself a spine, bro? Wow. With Dan's rejection, the would-be bride screams out in anguish. What do you want? and then literally rips out her own heart, oh. the heart of Megan Halsey, rather. She offers it up pitifully. Is this what you want? But it's not what Dan wants, because she's not actually Meg. So Gloria Stein starts spinning like a killer clown who got its nose popped, right as the reanimated zombies break inside and begin to attack Francesca and Herbert. There's a lot of crazy shit going on at this point, but nothing is crazier than the so-called tissue rejection that causes Gloria Stein to turn into a goddamn thing and literally fall to pieces. Uh, wow, that is some amazing messy body horror. All created masterfully by k and FX. I don't even know what's going on in half of this behind the scenes footage. Is that dude just pulling the bride's head off manually? Whatever they're doing, the end result is a gooey mess with some serious Cronenberg slash Jason goes to hell vibes. And then there's Hillhead oh, man, who shit. shows up to be just as caustic as ever. You stupid biped! He's, um, uh, he's something all right. Like I previewed earlier, the winged Dr. Hillhead was sometimes depicted using an animatronic designed by John Beekler. Other times, they used the much simpler method of gluing bat wings to the sides of David Gale's head. <laughs> I actually like him a lot. And in fact, I like all of these failed experiments that West has been hiding behind. Oh my God. What is that cat doing back there? <laughs> I never noticed that before. These creatures were all designed by the master of gross bug stuff, screaming and Mad George, who took a lot of props. Well, like he was back then. Salvador Dali inspired experiments that include yet another cat. Oh my god! And a cat humanoid more two What the fuck? Dent. George was especially excited about that last one, since it allowed him to further develop the double sided person suit that he had just used in Yuzna's equally disgusting society. Much like in the end oh, of the first movie, West is overcome by a bunch of reanimated zombies at the behest of Dr. Hill. Only this time, you know, Dr. Hill's a bat. Are we having fun? I'm like, yeah. really brace myself for yeah, society when you're talking sure. about it. These things are weird as shit. It's like that opening scene in Wishmaster. I love it. The ground above them starts to cave in, and the debris buries West first, then his failed experiments, and finally Dr. Hill. But I won't count any of them as dead, because in these movies, people and things tend to survive stuff like this. Case in point, Dan Kane and Francesca, who just climb straight out the ground like they're Ash Williams' as girlfriend. The movie ends with Dr. Hill laughing and Megan Halsey's heart still beating, but this isn't a storyline that's ever going to be continued or anything, so don't read too much into it. How many kills did Herbert West okay, walk down was... the aisle in this movie? Okay, watch it. Just watch it in. The numbers. But first, for science. Hello? That was dumb. Oh! 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 oh. By my count, there were 10 kills in Bride of Reanimator. The victims included five living men, one reanimated man, three living women, and one reanimated bride, giving us green stripes aplenty in our pie chart of death. With a runtime of 97 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 9.7 minutes. I'll give the we'll go golden chainsaw we'll for coolest kill to the titular bride uh, of Reanimator, who falls all the fuck to pieces after she rips out her own heart and experiences a severe case of so-called tissue rejection. This movie's got plenty of problems, but the effects of the bride's disintegration are some exceptional work thanks to K&B. Dull machete for lamest kill will go to the two Peruvian soldiers shot to death by Herbert West. No explanation really needed here, I think. And that's it. Bride of Reanimator came out in 1990 and would be followed by Beyond Reanimator 13 years later. We'll look at that one next week, but until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you don't know, this is Chelsea. She runs the Deadly Podcast. And normally we're boyfriend and girlfriend who like to get scared together. But now, ironic that this is the Bride of Reanimator episode. <laughs> we are fiancés who like to get scared together. We're engaged. Yeah. <laughs> so that happened. And uh, yeah, normally we don't share too many details about our personal lives, but we want to share this joy with you all. And it was good theming. Yeah, <laughs> serendipitous, did not plan yeah. that. Thank you for watching and supporting us. Because of that, we have the stability, I think, that allows us to take this step. So I uh, really appreciate it. And we're super pumped. All right, stop. So, uh, it was pretty gory. 
Ah, uh, I was expecting more gore from the from the next and last one, but it still was great though. Still was great. I would say it was really pretty gory with the with the, with the Briar Rihanna, how she fell pieces and all that though. Um, you know, hopefully I'm not sure they got married now or whatever, or they still engaged, but from one engagement to another James and needs congratulations. Um, but this was good. Still still was good. Uh, not enough to make me look away. You know, a couple ones I thought was to make me look away though. But um the dude the main guy, he a good ass actor. And I I guess I was crazy by I only even first knew about him from the I, I still know she did that summer movie, but before this, the reanimator man, he he's a he's a he's a boss he's a boss actor, I'll tell you that though. Um so the next one will be the Beyond Reanimator, came out two thousand three. There was no explicit version of that available, so it's gonna be wherever the video is. And following that, once I finish that that be the end of the Amber. I got unfriended and unfriended dark web. Even up unfriend one or two to make it short. And then we got spirit Suspiria and train and chair train. After that, before I start my next bash, we will have the uh, I will do the child's play for you for request. It's high quest that I do child's play. Um, them so what I'm, I may do. I'm thinking about it is either do do them before I start my next batch, or do them in between the selection I have in my in my third batch of uh, kill counts. I uh, ask y'all to vote for to react to. So, but other than that, uh, Bride Reander is pretty good. Um, I still think the first one was better. I think like the first one was better. But other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe my YouTube channel, and this will probably be up tomorrow. It's your boy T Bear signing off. One love.